Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. Now, in the wake of COVID-19, with the fact that the world has started to change how it sees and does things, embracing what is now referred to as a new reality. Lots of businesses have gone online and many people have started to embrace the concept of digital marketing. Joining us today is Ayeni Ekundayo. We'll be looking at the concept of digital marketing and how you can make the best of it. Uh, today, Ayeni Ekundayo is our guest on the show and he is a digital transformation consultant. Good morning, Ayeni. Thank you for joining us on the show. Uh, good morning. Good morning. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much, man. Huh? How are you? How are you holding up in this whole COVID-19 season? It's been quite interesting, you know, because of the whole thing. Um, our business has grown, scaled. The numbers have grown drastically um, over the period. Um, interestingly, people can work with you know, The only places where we have the fact that we've um, or office space is interesting, our resources in there. But um, our number grew from about 47 people to uh, we now have 68 people on the phone. So your numbers have increased from 47 to 68. During COVID, yeah. a lot of businesses are complaining that they had to let go of staff. But because yours is online, you're having to embrace the concept of getting more people, you know, and your client base is increasing. And that's fantastic. I think that's brilliant. So maybe we should talk about uh, digital marketing, how important it is for businesses and individuals to key into digital marketing. Okay, so uh, I would always say, very important for you to focus on what the objective is for your business. Every business has this time they can play online. It's a scope of your business that you can play online. And it's very important. That's the only way you have digital footprint because many people have taken it for granted for a while and think, oh, the first one after the other to work out. I see, for example, uh, uh, only if you verified accounts, you're very active on social media, and I know that has been a lot of attention for you. Um, I've seen if you do stuff online, like the attention you get. Many businesses dance in, in that, in the lights, to get the level of attention that you need. So some people invest a lot of money into but put little or nothing in marketing. And marketing is the that drives your business. So you see, uh, if you're green service business, primarily you have to put up shelf. So it's market that goes to you. And until you are ready to market seamlessly, you can probably never get the attention that you need. I focus on corporate as an organization that puts our drive start, dealing with corporate dealing with guys who are of the line. And um, I can tell you for free that if I mention some clients on your show, Change me after the show. Because these are guys that you will normally not find every day, but we do all we can to stay on the good book so that we work with the guys who are able to pay. So um, many organizations need to change their approach to marketing. Things of billboard, now the movement around town. You have uh, people who used to go to around 4, 5 a.m. now around. So that shows that. Are telling people that you said that not really, really the best now. Now, ninety percent of the people move on their devices in the place of getting attention. Uh, you see the um, payment solutions that you have in town now have e-commerce attached to them, so you don't need to own a website to start selling. Okay, uh, you don't, that, Did you say you don't need to own a website to start selling, right? Yes, you don't need All to right. own a website to start selling. Okay, so hold that thought, Ayeni. We're having a bit of um, connection issues. Um, it's a bit, it's actually difficult to be able to make um, sense of what you're saying because it keeps breaking off at intervals. So we're going to a quick break. When we come back, we'll try to reconnect with you and hopefully it will be clearer this time. That's one of the challenges that COVID-19 brings. We have to do all our interviews digitally. So please, we apologize for that. It's a technical network glitch. We'll try to reconnect with him and hopefully it will be clearer this time. We're going to break and the Good Morning Nigeria show continues in a moment. I want to know you so wrong, but no way. Only who knows not and knows not that he knows not, knows not that is not. Even if for if he's from the not. He had to know that the bad man will come and show you. Etimosini, I kill a fellow here, a fellow kitchen. 
Good morning, Naija. <laughs> Welcome back to the Good Morning Naija Show. We have Ayeni Ekundayo online. Hopefully, it can be clearer this time, and he is a, a digital communications expert. We're hoping that uh, we can talk a little about digital marketing, the pros, the cons, what and what you need to know as regards digital marketing. Ayeni, thank you very much for joining us again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, before we went on that uh compulsory break you had talked about how you don't need to have a website to start selling we've seen many people make the best out of their sales from social media instagram facebook twitter uh, and several e-commerce platforms but don't you think that it's rather scary to base your business on these platforms because you are not you are just a visitor and any day they can decide to kick you out a friend uh, had over 65,000 followers, and because she put a post that someone had a copyright claim over, her page was pulled down. And for over a month, she kept appealing and appealing, and at the end of the day, had to pay uh, uh, copyright claims to this international company. And it, was not a, it, was not, uh, uh, it wasn't 50,000 we're talking about. It was way more than that. So we found that people whose businesses is online or on pages like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, don't you think that poses more risk for them because it can be brought back any day? They can tell you, pack your load and go. Shouldn't it be better to have a website? I'm, 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 you're the expert, so what, what are your thoughts? Hello, can you hear me, Ayani? Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, did you hear the question hear or would you now. like me to take it again? Did you hear the question I asked you or would you like me to take it again? Oh, the network is just interfering with our, our conversation this morning. We're hoping that we can have, we can be able to connect I with understand. him eventually. I, I, can you hear what I said or would you like me to say that again? Yeah, I understand what you said. Okay. So, so most okay. times when, when you start selling online, you, you need to sell using multiple platforms. You just don't settle for um, Instagram because you're making a lot of mileage. You need to start expanding your reach to other channels, although people will tell you that's not the best place to sell your products. But for example, if you're selling on Instagram, you should start looking at Facebook as a backup place for you to speak sales to. If you're doing that, then you begin to collect what you call a database begin to collect phone number, emails, and the person's name. These are the three most important things that you have to do in sales. You don't need any other thing. So, while the person is trying to reach out, you get those details. Because you need to build a database that you put on automation, which is why when you sign up some of these um, foreign e-platforms, you begin to get SMS or emails being sent to you weekly. Or so maybe the big ones like uh, that we have in Nigeria, the Jumia, the Conga, you begin to receive automated emails. That is where the money is, not on your social media platform, because social media platform cannot be sustained. But if you go into automation, you start selling using emails. For the companies we've consulted for, uh, some of the uh, the big ones, I also just mentioned a few of them. Um, what we did was we drew people away from the social media platform into building a database for them, which every small business is going to do. So the person who buys from you, the person who makes inquiries from you, take their database and then go onto a platform that does automation, which is um, the ones that are not in Nigeria, get response, active response, and put your emails in there and weekly send emails to them. See somebody trying to buy from you and doesn't stop. There is a future on those platforms that makes it very it's called abandoned cards, which if maybe you've ever experienced, you made an attempt to buy something. Maybe your card was not working and then you begin to receive emails telling you this is what you notice you're trying to do and you're not going to make a transaction. As a small business, that won't cost you anything. If it will cost you the most, it's $9 a month or $10 a month. And then you are able to create bigger conversion because out of the sales that you make, people that buy from you, at least 400 that made an attempt to buy from you and that stop at some point or the other. So I want us to start seeing that Social media is not sufficient to sell what you're selling. Start moving into automation, into emails, and that is where your cash lies. Because also, if you're selling on social media, um, mere posting, only uh, between 2 to 9% of your followers will see what you posted based on your level of engagement. All right. Now, this is, for, this is for businesses, right? 
How yes. can individual brands, and I'm asking this because I'm an entertainer and an individual brand, how can individual brands and creatives leverage on this as well? Okay, so, um, so as an individual brand, um, the main thing I would say to you is um, begin to create content that people want to engage in. So I give you a case study. Uh, during the COVID period, we decided to create free training. And when we put out the form, uh, we had about uh, about 400 people who signed up for our training, and about 150 came for a two days training. And while we were doing that, we sold um, a course that we're selling for oh, 10,000 naira. Sign up, and then let's teach you a mentor. Let's put you under a mentor um, process. 45 people signed, which gave us about 450 came for something we did not plan for. So it was after they had signed up, we started working on the process of how to even run the mentorship. So for four weeks, we have to now go over two hours every week to help them. So you are running a brand like yours on TV, you're doing stuff. I see that you're doing something for girls and some girls stuff. There are people who are feeling to also get the things that you're also doing. Okay, how do you get women to meet them? What is the process? You can go through building a free platform or maybe giving them a free engagement, maybe using Zoom or any of those um, Google Meets. At Google Meet, if you're using it, you can have up to 250 people that will come on your on your uh, live. And then from there, you create a conversion, create courses, because courses is the next big thing that will happen in Nigeria. A lot of people are doing that way now. So you find the big boys who are quickly selling all kinds of courses, holding all kinds of uh, hangouts online. That is the next big thing. And also, don't sell to the markets that cannot pay you. So in one of the products that we sell, we sell for thirty dollars, no, twenty six dollars in the US, and uh, between uh, in the past one, we've gotten about a hundred sign on that particular product, and it's just simple for children. So you discover that a lot of people are willing to pay, you, but you're selling to the wrong market because some of the people in Nigeria don't have the capacity to pay you what you're looking for. So also look at the other markets, other part of the world where they are willing to pay. You have you do voiceovers, you do all of those kind of things, especially for entertainers. They are if you go on the other side of the aisle, the other side of the, of the world, you find people who are acting who can use African assets to sell some of their products for them. So these are things that you can leverage on as it were. So I think you should take advantage of that particular capacity. I am definitely so, uh, the network has started again. I'm definitely going to pick uh, some points from this. This has been very interesting, and I know I would continue. I would have a conversation with you beyond this. But let's talk about some of the most common do's and don'ts when it comes to digital marketing. Okay, so um, the first thing is uh, don't always oversell mm -hmm. people. That's one thing I've also learned. Don't oversell people. Secondly, um, uh, don't always also advise is that. Don't steal people's content. If you're going to steal, refer to them, tell uh, make sure that you don't have issues with plagiarism. Uh, the third one is um, it's a long time thing. It's a, it's a marathon. So don't run, don't run a sprint on social media. Don't invest all your money quickly on social media and think you're doing a sprint and you're going to get results overnight. It doesn't work that way. Social media is about building relationship, trust over a period, and then people will to come back to you. Um, the other thing I'll tell you that you don't on social media is that watch out for what you're posting. Because some of the things you post now, will you be proud of them in the next five years, in the next six years? Even when Facebook bring it up to you and say, this is memories, are you willing or happy to post them again? That these are the things I've done five years ago. Now, another thing is that uh, the, the do's, let me talk about the do's. Um, Always share things that people will be willing to reshare because there are content that go viral. There are people who set up different challenges now. Why? Because those content have viability in the planning. Most people just do sustenance campaign and think that um, these things will go viral. Now, another thing is that set up notification on everything that mentions you or talks about you. So there's notification on myself, my wife, my kids, because I don't want scandals, I don't want stories. So, as soon as you mention my name anywhere online, you will get I, I will get a notification talking about it. You need to always be aware. You need to always tell yourself that 
um, I want to be on top of my game. So notification is very key. Now, also, um, make sure you push things on credible platforms because all they would associate me with you now because I'm on social media, I'm on TV with you. So they will associate my brand identity and all of that with your kind of thing now because this is a platform. If the platform is not credible enough, you will not find me there. Now, also, I also tell um, uh, business or digital marketers or people, this generally cut across many businesses, that don't go to the meetings of the people that look alike. And when I mean people are look alike, uh, so for example, they are hosting social media events now online, and I'm attending the event, I can't get prospects from those kind of meetings. But if I go to an HR event, I go to a marketing event, I go to CEO's event, I can get prospects from those kind of meetings. So those are two different things that people don't also understand. Another do that you need to know also, your videos, your, uh, uh, your audios, and your pictures are very, very important. No matter how you try to go about them, in a long time, maybe in a, in a short while from now, you will need to remove them online because one of the services you provide, which is why I said deal with high HNIP, is the fact that we manage reputation for a lot of top Nigerians, which you cannot find online. You cannot find some of the dirty things or some of the bad things people see about them online. Because, because you have over. cleaned everything. So if, <laughs> we've cleaned it. That's my role. That's what I do. <laughs> that's why that's I get some of the clients I deal with. I can't mention them. So they are like the top, top shots. So you cannot just wake up and post things about them. So immediately you post, you receive a notification. We we'll bring down your website or we we'll bring down your social media account. After advising you, if you don't do, then we we'll take it out. So we build relationships with the platform owners to the point where we can do removers. Now we can do verification. We can do anything that we need to do on those platforms. Because also your your journey is fine. Like. You don't want to wake up tomorrow, they give you an appointment, or maybe because you want to do some project with the United States government, and then they begin to dig out debts about it. These are very difficult things to handle. So you don't want controversy. Now, controversy also serves, but the right controversy. Yes, I was going to ask that, because many people we see, even with entertainers, they want to release a song, and then they jump on controversy. Two-Face wanted to release a song. Immediately, his wife put out a tweet that alleged, uh, alluded to infidelity, and people started carrying the gist, and before you know, he dropped a video the next morning. So we see lots of entertainers doing, uh, con thriving on controversy. How some people say that bad news is uh, good news, or bad publicity is also good publicity. Yeah, What's your take if, on if, that? If you is money, if they know how to manage it, if they know how to convert it, that was what likes of Kim Kardashian did in the U.S. And there are a few guys in Nigeria who have been able to manage that because for every bad you can always get a good result out of it, depending on how you manage it. So you never waste a crisis. You need to get the best out of every crisis that happens. And then knowing the right set of people that can work with you on a project, on how on how to achieve it, because there are many parts. It's like the way you go to a doctor, you know. I've done this 11 years, and my dad, you know, has medical, um, um, it's a medical person. My, it's, like, it's like I'm from a family of this kind of people. So, uh, my dad said something to me one time. A guy who had the, who, who is a cardiologist, who has five years experience, or who just finished his housemanship and all of that, offers to do surgery for you. And another Baba that will come that wants to do surgery for you, who's had like maybe 20 years experience doing heart surgery. Both of them, one thing you've always forgotten is that they have a signature or a, or a tagline on their certificate that says that license to kill without being held responsible, something like that. I don't know the exact word now. But the five years guy will tell you this surgery will be one million naira. But the guy who's done it for 20 years will tell you maybe this surgery is seven million. Many people are up for the young guy, but they've seen they've not noticed that this young guy has not seen many things in his lifetime. While the older guy had seen many hearts in his lifetime. So nothing actually goes wrong. So the number of lost cases that the older guy will have is less. So you find young people who just wake up because they've done one or two trainings somewhere, and say they do social media. They will spend $100 on maybe 10,000 impressions. Meanwhile, when you go to the way you're supposed to do it, you go through a proper training, you've done it over the years, that same $10,000 can be done. Okay. 
All right. Um, before I let you go, let's talk about the role of sponsored ads. I, I have to bring this up because many people were starting to see a lot of people jumping in on sponsored ads. So some people are complaining that they're not able to sponsor ads from their pages. Are they really as effective? And how, if yes, how can people maximize using sponsored ads to push their brands forward? Okay. Okay. So um, I'll quickly, I'll quickly go per platform. So for Facebook. Go get phone numbers and emails and do adverts that are called lookalikes. It would give you a lot of mileage. So, if, for example, your budget is $20 a day and you are running using mm -hmm. Facebook audience, you are doing the categorization based on Facebook audience, you will probably not get more than maybe 10,000 or 12,000 or maybe 20,000 impressions. But if you are running a lookalike campaign on Facebook where you're using people's phone numbers, so I'll give you an instance. If I have your phone number on my phone now, Facebook will start suggesting you as friend on Facebook normally. That's what, what happens. I guess you've experienced that before. Um, that is quite psychological because Facebook has access to your contacts. So what they now do is that the same kind of contact that you have, you have contact of people living in VI, they will serve ads to people who live in VI because you use their phone number as targeting for them. So that will give your sponsored ad a lot of mileage. Same thing works for email. So if you have bulk emails of people, you use it as a look-alike campaign. People who have similar interests like that on Facebook will gain the mileage. Now, I go to um, Twitter. If you just open your Twitter account for fresh, the first three months is not usually ideal for you to run a campaign on Twitter. But also, if you are able to scale that, or if you have an older um, account, you can go ahead with it. But also, you're targeting also in Twitter do not target some things that will not work for you, especially people focus on impression and don't go on for web conversion. Now, there is also the part where you need to do lead generation. Focus more on lead generation if you're a business that is service-based. If you're a product-based, then focus on web conversion. Many people just click on brand awareness because the impressions will be very large. So they begin to say, hey, how many impressions do I have? What is my reach? Instead, your business needs conversion. Your business needs numbers. That's what you should focus on. If you're selling an app or you're trying to get people to download an app, what you can do is to take um, something called, um, um, uh, what is this thing? In, um, so there, there, are, there is this code that Facebook will generate for you. I'm trying to remember. I know the SDK part, but I can't remember the other side now. Where you, it's like a carousel ad. Take the code from Facebook and put it in the app then you are able to know the number of people who download your app per day. Notification is the biggest thing any app can have, especially when people are promoting using ad, uh, apps. Are you promoting apps or you're trying to use an app to do stuff? Notification on your app is the only reason people go back to the app. So that is the biggest secret you can have about any app. If you're going on LinkedIn, LinkedIn just expanded their, uh, their engagement now. First get 50 free uh, 50 dollar uh, free credit on linkedin before you do anything it's very very important make a request for that 50 free dollar coupon then if you spend another 50 dollars then you have a hundred dollars when you're running your campaign that 50 is open to everybody and they are still running it now when you do on linkedin linkedin just expanded their uh, advertising mechanics now so it looks exactly like facebook so you can run display you can run a couple of things on linkedin this is an update that was done about two weeks ago if you're going on Instagram, running ads directly on Instagram, which you will see uh, a couple of things, but you will not get the kind of results you get when you integrate that Instagram to Facebook and you run the ads from, from Facebook. You know, you can integrate your Instagram into Facebook. And if you run your ads from Facebook, especially for video ads, you will get more impression, more views, more engagement, more reach when you run through Facebook. But if you run just by clicking promote on Instagram, your um, your reach is benchmarked. You will not get the kind of numbers that you're looking at. So that is one fact that many people are not aware of. Now, mm -hmm. the bottom line, which is what I, I keep going back to, is that get as many databases as you can from your social media. Because Facebook ads, the day you stop sponsoring, that's the last time people will stop seeing the ads. But if you do email marketing, it takes an action to stop doing email marketing. So, for example... I'll love to unsubscribe, right? Exactly. So you must have seen my mail before you unsubscribe. So you become top of mind. So that is a logic that many people don't realize that that is how it also works. That people would want to take an action to stop getting an email from me. Even if they are trying to delete, they've seen my subject line and they've seen my 
uh, the name of sender. Those are two primary things. And then if you have preview, you, they will have seen the preview. These are things that are, that works highly for B two B marketing. So, but because we are not, we don't have sufficient time. I may not be able to explain everything that you need to know. But these are very good tips. That I feel if you use it for your business, you will scale. And then you go on all these um, payment gateways that we have in Nigeria now. The the two flexible ones. Um, there used to be an existing one that was complex. They now do e-commerce, free e-commerce. So you just pick maybe the Rivon, and you open an account with them, which is free. Put the picture of the Rivon, put the description and everything, and put it out there. That link is enough to, for you to make sales. So they just uh, one of them just updated yesterday, and you can own a whole store on their platform without having to own a website. So these I are mean, things in that... fact, the tips that you have given us today, I feel like I've been through a semi-digital marketing training course. But I'm sure that you do more of this professionally and otherwise. And who knows, maybe on social media. So how can we follow up with you on social media? How can we keep up to date with what you do? Okay, so so just type Ayane uh, Kundayo on social media. Uh, you will find my handles. You'll find Ayane um, Kundayo on Twitter. I am on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Uh, I think it's only my uh, Instagram that I stylishly just have to keep secret. But the, because you don't want us to see your family photos. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm opening a second account. That, I already have a second account that's not gone public that has about 12,000 people on it. Okay. It's um, that okay. I that you, but that same. So that's D A F E M X. D A F E M X is my Instagram handle that people can access directly now. Okay, uh, okay. Find okay. Out my content there. And okay. then because we also run an organization that does recruitment, we hire talent across the world. So those are, we hire talent, we have about um, eight talents in Canada. So if you are running to Canada also, you know, Nigerians are running now, we can also uh, give them talent there. So those are things that we Okay, um, I'm not running to Canada, but you and I have a conversation. My birthday is next month, and I'm going to put you on the spot for a birthday gift. Ayani, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a delight speaking with you. Uh, I yeah. wish you a very wonderful Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. To enjoy more of these our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.